Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through a simple state machine in TypeScript. Um, this is something I've recently learned how to do, and I wanted to share it with the world just in case there's somebody else out there who doesn't know how to create a state machine and what they are. So first of all, let's explain what a state machine is. So a finite state machine, um, there are many other state machines out there, but this is kind of the simplest one to get started with is a mathematical computational model um, which you create a machine that has a set number of states but only one state can be active at any given time. Um, to get from one state to another that's called a transition and you move based on the previous state and the input that has been done by the computer or the user or whatever. This kind of sounds confusing at first but it will make more sense as the video goes on. So this is what we're going to be building uh, in TypeScript from scratch. This is a simple traffic light. And as you can see, based on the previous um, um, definition, there is a, an initial state here, which is red. And then with the timer we're, we're going to create, it will jump from red to amber, amber to green, and then back from green to red. Now. You guys have seen traffic light before and you know that traffic lights do not have three states. They have probably four. Um, it goes from red to amber, amber to green, and then green back to amber before going to red. But for the sake of simplicity, we are going to have just three states um, so you can understand the concept and figure out what a state machine is. So you may have seen diagrams like this before, this kind of round rectangular objects re representing state. Um, this is more of a classic state diagram. And this is a modern one that uses, I think, UML, the, the universal modeling language, something like that. But anyway, um, I think these are a lot easier to understand. So I'm going to go with this diagram um, for explanation. Um, so in order to begin following me, you have to have Node.js installed. It's really simple to install. You just basically click, click on this, no matter what operating system you're on. Um, there's a simple installer, and then it will install on your system. To check you have Node.js installed, in your terminal, um, I'm using the one in VS Code, you can type node-v, and it should give you a version number. So I'm using version 14.1 um, because I'm a bit crazy, uh, but you're welcome to use 12 point whatever. Okay, so let's start. Um, you have to make sure, because we're using TypeScript, that you have TypeScript installed. And to do that, you simply run npm install globally TypeScript. Now, I have already done this, so I'm not gonna do it again. But to check that you have it installed properly, um, you can do tsc, which is the TypeScript compiler, dash dash version. That's not how you spell version. Um, and apparently you can't find my TSC, which I didn't plan for. Um, let's install TypeScript globally then. Cool. And now when I do TSC version, um, it should give me a correct version. So let's go ahead and create a directory. Let's call it, I don't know, um, simple sm for simple state machine. We are going to then cd into that directory um, and then open it up in VS Code. Cool. So I no longer need this one. I'm gonna close that. And I'm going to maximize this to the viewport of the video, which is nice and big for everyone to see. Um, I'm going to pop up the terminal in VS Code, and I'm going to make uh, a file. So let's call it traffic light. Okay, and that's here. Cool. So let's start coding. Um, first of all, let's make our states. So we're going to have a console variable which um, will be red. That'll be a string, that'll equal red, like so. 
actually let's make all capitals so because these are our states const number and you can probably figure out what next one's going to be So these are our states, and what we're going to do now is create a function that will well change the states um, based on what the previous one is. So let's do what function change lights. Um, it's going to be a void. So when I tend to write TypeScript code, if it's going to return a void, I don't write anything, so I'll just leave it. But I'm telling you now, it's going to be a void. Um, and before I do this, I've forgotten a few things. First of all is um, the state variable, which for now will be a string, since all our states are strings. Um, and by default, let's make it red. So our default state is red. Um, and then basically if we do a switch here, and state. So if the state is red, which it is by default, then change it to amber. And of course, you can figure out what's going to happen here. We do a similar thing to amber. So if it's amber, then change it to green. Whoops. And if it is green, no, sorry, if it is, yeah, if it's green, then it will make the state. Right. Okay. So as you can see, just like a traffic light, if it's red, it will go to amber. If it's amber, it'll go to green. And if it's green, it will go back to red. Hope that makes sense. So these are all our states, but um, I, I don't want our states to create our out, to like um, be our output. I want our output to be something else. So what I'm going to do is make a variable called lights. Um, string. This will all make sense later on in the video, but I know it doesn't currently. Um, bear with me. So this will be, I don't know, nothing by default. Um, and then here, once you're red, I want light. Uh, actually, let's make it singular. Light here, formatting, to be red, lowercase red. Um, and similarly, I'm going to have one here for amber. Amber, learn to spell. And as you can guess, oh, formatting is not on my side today. Green. Perfect. So now I'm going to create the um, timer transition that I, that I showed you in the diagram before that will trigger all these events. So this will be a simple set interval, um, which will run the change lights function. And it will run it every second. Cool. So when this runs, it will run this change lights function. We'll check the state, and if it's red, it will make lights equal red. Um, so we can see what's going on. I have a console log of the light. Cool. And this is it. This is a really simple state machine. As you can see, these are the states. They're being manipulated by this transition, and they're editing our code, which is just the light at the moment. So let's see in action. First of all, we need to convert this ts file into js because node only reads js files um, to do that you just write tsc and then traffic lights.ts and then it'll convert it to a javascript file but there'll be an error um why is it not found have i made a mistake i have it's light not lights cool so that's been compiled and now if i run node uh, node oh what's what's it giving me okay let's ignore that for now i'll explain it later try click lights .js. here we go moment of truth you can see it prints red amber green and that my friends is a very simple state machine in action let's cancel that and let's deal with these issues so TypeScript by default would expect you to either have a module or a script. So a module will have its own state, 
So this is using its own kind of state. Sorry. Yeah, it's, its own scope in in the file in the file. But a script will use the global state. Now I want this to be a module because I want it to use um constants and lets. I want the scope to be um, inside this file. So to trick TypeScript into thinking this is a module, I'm going to make it export an empty function. Sorry, an empty object. And what it does is it reads the export keyword and it will make it a module. So let's have a look what that does to the JavaScript file. Um, if I put that here, if it works. So you'll see it looks almost identical. And when I save this and rerun the compiler here, it now makes it a module and all the errors are gone. Okay, so as you can see, the, the state machine works. We saw it in action, but we're not quite done yet. Um, the beauty of TypeScript is it gives you something called an enum, which is a bit like an object that assigns numbers to text, um, but slightly different because you can only have one enum active at one time. Uh, let me show you how it works. So I'm going to get rid of all these states here, put strings. I'm going to create an enum and I will make call that state. I'm going to have state red, amber, and green. So now instead of our state being a string, it will be a type of state. And by default, it will be state red. So this is now our initial state. And all of these now will have to change to um, states as well. So instead of being red, it'll be state um, red. Instead of being amber, it'll be state amber. Sorry, state amber with an S. Um, this will go back to red. And this, as you can figure it out, would be green. Okay, so now this is automatically much cleaner than what we had before. And now let's compile it. And run that as a JavaScript file. As you can see, it works as expected. So this is a much cleaner way of representing states in a state machine. Um, of course, if you had actual production code, not this test stuff, your logic will be in here. Um, or kind of wherever you want it to be. Um, as long as you have the states being um, used, then it's a state machine. And of course, this could be an if statement. It doesn't have to be a switch. Um, it could be whatever you want, as long as your application has been determined by states and um, different states have been changed by transitions, which are, affecting, which are affected by the input and the current state. So I hope that makes a lot of sense. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, um, feel free to like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you later. Bye.